Jack says, we're cattle, culture, and prairie toughness, combined to create the most enduring symbol of the Old West. The Longhorns of Texas must draw upon the rough and tumble resilience of the American cowboy. They must get right back in the saddle. Harold winds up, throws it up the right sideline, ball caught, touchdown Texas! UT is a program that knows about winning championships. And that proves you deserve to be number one, and that's what you are. Producing legends on the field and on the sideline. Now, a lone star is set to lead the herd back to victory. And his name is Colt McCoy. Say goodnight to this one, touchdown Texas! Two champions aren't made by avoiding failure. They are made by responding to it. From Darrell K. Loyal, Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin, it's Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by KFC. Today, the Baylor Bears meet the fourth-ranked Texas Longhorns. A look at the Big 12 South, and you understand why Texas is still in the national championship hunt as Texas Tech, the leader, those top four teams all ranked in the top nine BCS nationally. Welcome, everyone. Bill Land, Dave Lapham, glad to have you with us. There is life after a loss to Texas Tech for this Texas club. Well, there's no question. Everything's still out in front of them if they run the table. Big 12 South champ. Big 12 champ. Maybe BCS national championship game. Went out, see what happens. And they got a guy that could just do it for him in Colt McCoy having a fantastic year. Colt McCoy continues to rewrite the record book, and that's not going to change. Leading passer, leading rusher on this football team. And we can see what he's done here over the last four games completion percentage against Missouri. It's no coincidence they rushed for 203 yards. Against Texas Tech, when he completed less than 59%, they only rushed for 80 yards. You want to be balanced. You don't want to be one-dimensional. Speaking of balance, they've gotten that done so far at Baylor under first-year head coach Art Bryles. That gives them an opportunity for a possible upset. Oh, no question. Some people talk the talk. They walk the walk. Look at that balance in 2008. And they are extremely efficient in their offense, and they're led by Robert Griffin. I mean, this guy is a rare impact athlete. He has confidence. He plays with a swagger. He's poised. His demeanor is never in a panic mode. In the sideline, in the huddle, at the line of scrimmage, in the pocket, this kid's got it all. Plus, he's extremely intelligent. Baylor in Texas is coming straight ahead when we return. Mike Goldberg and DeMarco Farr in our college football Saturday studio. Lifting straps work for carrying furniture. Apply. Well, day here in Austin as the Baylor Bears shoot for the upset coming in. Three and six, one and four in the Big 12 against the fourth ranked Texas Longhorns who were knocked off the top spot last week by Texas Tech. Let's send it down to Jim Knox with Art Bryles. All right, thanks, Jim. Yeah, last week Baylor lost to Mizzou 31 28, but they trailed 21 7 early before the comeback that fell short eventually. Kickoff goes to Shipley. Out to the 35-yard line, Jordan Shipley, who's taken one back for a touchdown this year already. Let's take a look at our KFC starting lineup for the Texas Longhorns. Ulatowski, Tanner, Hall, Dockery, and Hicks up front. And the backs and receivers, Shipley has been on fire the last four games with 40 receptions. Crosby a bit banged up. We'll see if he's able to go. And a quarterback, of course, Colt McCoy. 6'3", the junior out of Tuscola, Texas, Jim Ned High School, and he is the unquestioned leader as they have a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. McCoy, the throw out of the gun, and complete. Shipley stretches forward across the 40, though Mike can mark him down at the 39. Brought down by Williams. KFC giving you the starting lineups. We'll go to the Baylor Bears. 
They've lost three in a row after a win against Iowa State, their lone Big 12 conference victory. We'll set the stage for you lineup-wise for them defensively in just a moment. Texas, second and six now. And a handoff as Whitaker getting the start today. Fozzie been banged up much of the season. Impressive and limited work against Tech last week. Now here's our KFC Baylor defensive group. Freeman, Rhodes, Brian, and Lamb, a veteran crowd. Linebacker Joe Pavelli leads him. He's the leading tackler in the Big 12 Conference, the junior. And in the secondary, they say, I say they, Texas coaches say Lake is a tackling machine is the best way to put it. Yeah, I think, I think Pavlik and, and Lake, I mean, they are very, very strong in the middle uh, defensively. 33. And complete for the first down, Malcolm Williams steps out of bounds. Our days in scouting report. Start things off, first of all, for the Texas Longhorns. Well, they certainly don't want to have a hangover. You can't let one loss turn, turn into two. You got to do something good to energize the crowd early in this football game. No drops. They had five in the first half, seven for the game against Tech. That's as many as they had all year going into the football game. They want to ground Griffin, contain him, make him beat you with his throwing arm, not his legs. Make him one dimension. First and ten. McCoy. Deflected. And that is one of the things that gives Baylor a chance because their turnover situation. Pavelic got a paw on that one, Dave. If they're going to win, they're going to have to get a couple. Yeah, there's there's no doubt. And, and, and Baylor has been fantastic. They're plus nine in the turnover department. And that's just a good job of getting in the passing lane. Pavelic and looking at Colt McCoy's eyes and making those reads. You know, I talked about being strong up the middle defensively. Rhodes, defensive tackle. Pavelic at linebacker. And middle linebacker, Jordan Lake at safety. Catcher, shortstop, center fielder in baseball. Defensive tackle, middle linebacker, safety in football. They're very tough up the middle defensively. Second and 10 for the 48. This one dropped, and that was a problem for McCoy last week. His numbers compared to the rest of the season last week at 59% completion rate, 20 of 34, but he had seven drops. Right, and you factor those seven drops in his completions, and he's 79.5%, just like he is on the season. It's amazing to me that this, at this stage of the season, he's completing four out of every five attempts. That is just mind-boggling. Yeah, wouldn't you like to have a bad week with 59%? Yeah. yeah. Third and 10 at the 48. McCoy. Can scramble. He's our leading rusher as well. Drills it, and it's a first down inside the 40-yard line. Shipley, he is his go-to man, his roommate. Six foot 190, Jordan Shipley, senior from Vernon, Texas, picks up 14 yards before Pavelic and Lake hit him. They have, uh, Jordan Shipley's already lined up in a few different spots in, in various formations. And what he's going to do is find a little soft spot in the zone and present himself as his available target for Colt McCoy. And these guys are on the same page. It's like they have ESP with each other, you know. Uh, they know exactly what each other's thinking without any kind of verbal communication. The last four games, all against highly ranked teams, he has 40 receptions, 411 yards. McCoy in trouble, but escapes here. Got all day now, and it is complete to Obanaya. And a flag is thrown back near the line of scrimmage. Were they downfield? I mean, there was a lot going on. A lineman might have leaked, might have leaked downfield. You have an ineligible receiver downfield if that's the case. And you can understand. An ineligible receiver downfield on the offense number 55. Yeah, and, and I can Five yard penalty and replay the down. Dockery is the guilty party. And I can understand at that point in your head, you have a clock and you think Colt McCoy is going to tuck it and run. You know, that penalty is, is understandable. You don't want to take it, obviously. But you, uh, it, it is something that takes place in the heat of the battle. You can't have eyes in the back of your head. And, and watch Dockery up at the line of scrimmage. Watch him start to leak downfield a little bit. Wearing double fives, number 55. They, they gave him the flag on that one. Texas has had penalty free from the offensive side three games this season. UTEP, Colorado, the Oklahoma State game. See how they react to this one. The look in is incomplete as Brandon McCoy Collins. can't hook with Brandon Collins. Yeah. Trying to do that little alley screen, that little bubble screen, and Colt McCoy could not quite get there. Look at, look at him compared to Major Applewhite and James Brown. A couple of pretty good quarterbacks uh, in their own right here with the Longhorns, but Colt McCoy is separating himself from that pack. McCoy 
Number one, 74 touchdown passes in his career as well. Second and 15 from the 43. Whitaker dances to the 40, breaking through. Whitaker down across to the 30-yard line. Fozzie Whitaker, the 5'10 freshman out of Houston, Parallel High School, and a 13-yard pickup here. Well, what, what uh, they did here is pull the backside. Watch the big lineman up in the back. Kick out block. Watch Yulotowski get his spit. Get up the football. Nice block by the big fella. Gives it a lane for Whitaker to take advantage of. You know, Texas is, the offensive line's embarrassed about the lack of running game last week. 80 yards, 47 of those coming on the last drive. They're coming out today hard. Flag thrown on a third and two. Be a, procedure a false penalty. start by number 83 of the offense. Penalty is five yards, and replay third down. Greg Smith a little early, out of his stance. Now third and makeable becomes third and dicey. Much different uh, dynamic, third and eight as opposed, or third and seven as opposed to third and two. Texas on the years averaged six penalties a game for just under 56 yards, so a couple of costly ones here. And third and seven now at the 35-yard line. And you're talking, what, 52-yard field goal here as well. That's Shipley right there on the inside. Watch him. McCoy. All day here. Baylor dropping a lot of folks. Cut. Got a man. Touchdown. Flag is thrown. Touchdown on Cosby. Okay. Cosby struggling a little, with a little bit of a back injury, like a hip pointer to the back kind of deal. But he's from the Waco area. He desperately wanted to play. Let's see if this stands. Holding by number 15 of the Big defense. The penalty is declined. Touchdown. Cosby with his fifth TD reception of the year. Out of Mark, Texas. They mentioned near Waco and playing with that back injury. Nothing going to keep him out here. Chris Burke, the guilty party, calls the defensive holding. That's declined. Holt McCoy hooks up on another touchdown pass. Touchdown to interception ratio. Phenomenal. So the point after attempt now for UT is Hunter Lawrence comes on. Lawrence, 46 of 46, and this one is good. So he stays perfect on the season. The senior, Juan Cosby, with a 35-yard TD reception. Texas up 7-0. Texas quick lead, 7-0, as Cosby, a 35-yard TD reception from Colt McCoy. And three for three on third down conversions on that drive. Colt McCoy extends the play here. Another red zone touchdown for Colt McCoy, or not actually outside of the red zone, but he extends the play, gets to the, allows Cosby to work his way across the back line of the end zone. Poise, no panic whatsoever. Just throw it up, make a catch, Cosby. That's the 24th touchdown pass of the season for Colt McCoy to only five interceptions. That's big time. Cosby over 2,200 yards receiving now in his career. Justin Tucker to kick it off for the University of Texas. Jake Lamar and McCall Baker are deep. And it will be Baker at the three. Right up the gut. 15, 20. Slides forward near the 26-yard line. First to 10. Let's take a look at the KFC starting lineup for the Baylor Bears. One of the strengths of this team is the offensive line, and Jason Smith's a guy that will be a someday player soon. You take a look at the backs and receivers, Finley Smith, and White, an outstanding freshman to go along with their outstanding freshman quarterback who's already setting some records, Dave. He is the real deal at the quarterback position. Tremendously gifted athlete, and the numbers speak for it. Records set already thrown 11 touchdown passes, rushed for 10 more. True dual threat. Rolls out here. Griffin. Deep drop and good defense by Texas. Knocking it away near the 45 as Beasley covering on the play. And Baker the intended receiver. Contested catch. And Beasley does a good job of arriving simultaneously with the football. And, and makes the play. Gets his hand in there and rakes away at it. Body position was favorable for the offense. Beasley combated that on a contested case, case, catch scenario. Griffin, 6'3", 200, freshman of Coppers Cove, Texas. There you see the balance in his game and 21 total touchdowns. Whoa. Loose football. Kill.
handle was right there. Griffin pounced on it, though. And here's Boehner. Dave mentioned about the turnover situation. They're plus nine, Texas plus two. There's also a penalty flag here. That was the one area that Baylor has a bit of an edge against the Longhorns. Baylor with those nine giveaways on the season, seventh best in the country. It's only six teams with After zero. the play, a personal foul by number 30, 33 of the defense. The 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Now that's costly. Lamar Houston gets nailed. So the, the potential giveaway by Baylor would have been a null and void anyway, but a little bit of a, a, a problem with the, a simple handoff, quarterback, running back, and see what we get here. Houston, the grab the face mask and trying to yank him down to the turf, he does. And uh, Houston didn't like the way he was knocked to the ground late, but hey, that's football. He gets after Greason back and it cost him 15 big ones. As a result, a bad turns into a good situation here for Baylor on their first possession. Griffin rolls out, completes the short pass to Akers here. Let's take a look now at the KFC starting lineup for the Texas defensive group. They are without their studs. Preseason All-American Brian Arakpo, who was injured. But Miller, Houston, Melton, and Kindle, a real playmaker. They move around. Robinson, Bobineau, and McElroy in the backers. Palmer, Thomas, Gideon, and Beasley in the secondary. And the council Gideon a bit. He felt so bad last week on that final drive by Texas Tech where a pass was drilled to him and he dropped and then Tech answered with a TD to win the game. And they say he'll recover and be fine. Griffin scrambles here out of bounds on the Baylor sideline near the 39-yard line of the Bears. McElroy given chase, the weak side backer, a junior from Hallsville, Texas, who is the leading solo tackler in the Big 12 Conference, averaging better than six solos a game. And that's what Griffin can do for you. You know, he can hurt you with his feet. That what, what Texas wants to do is contain him. Stay in their pass rush lanes, contain him, make him beat you with his throwing arm, not with his feet and his legs, because after all, he's a world-class hurdler. He can beat you with his feet and his legs. Third and six from the 39 for Baylor. Griffin. Throws this one away. Baylor will have to punt it away. A great pressure that time. Henry Melton, the senior from Grapevine, Texas. Griffin a little bit of a limp as he works his way to the sideline. A little hitch in the give along, but he's definitely a competitive, uh, competitive young man. But, boy, he is a thoroughbred. I mean, looking at that lower body, he has got so much strength in those hips and legs. And, uh, you know, he's the Big 12 champion hurdler. 400-meter hurdler champion. He finished third in the nation. Was an All-American in track and field. And that was right out of high school. Last spring, Epperson, 13th in the nation with that 44-yard average. Oh. And then Shipley, wow. fair catch, is just blasted at the 15-yard line. Yeah, that's going to cost you, big. So whatever Baylor gained, well, they just gave it back with that play. Yeah, Price uh, just runs right through the return man, Shipley. And this is the kind of start that Coach Art Browse did not want. Shipley very, very sure with his fair catch signal. And man, I mean, Price, he's going to pay a price with that hit with a 15-yard penalty. 46-yard punt. Shipley paid a little bit of a price with the hit, but a bigger play. price on Price. A personal foul by number 12 of the kicking team, hitting a player that gave a fair catch signal. Following that 15 yards, and it's first down. And yeah, they were both in the area. I think Lamar's like, are you kidding me? I, don't, I thought it was Price, but... Stay with us. We'll take a brief break. We'll be right back here in Austin, Texas, leading 7-0. Everyone wondered how Texas would react after the loss to Texas Tech. Well, Mac Brown utilized the help of a famous alum to come in and speak to the team. I know what you guys are going to do, and you guys are going to win out. You're going to show the world that what happened on last Saturday was just a fluke. You guys really are the best team in the country. Let's hook them horns, y'all. Good luck. Tanya Richards coming in. It's one of the reasons Mac Brown's one of the all-time greats. Yeah. Nothing goes unturned with Mac Brown. Colt McCoy checking out that gold medal. She had the gold medal over her bronze. She got upset and then came back and won another goal and won a gold. 
Back to the action, and Texas comes out rolling again as Cosby, who caught the TD pass to get him on the board, catches the first down pass here, and 12 yards on the pickup. So Texas, 87 yards of offense, Baylor minus two as we get going here with the second possession of Texas, and the Horns have it. First and 10 now at the 42. Dwayne Crawford thought he was tackled by Shipley out there in space. Good block by Shipley. Fake to Whitaker. McCoy. Complete. Hosby again. Moves the chains down just shy of the 45 of the Baylor Bears. Another 12-yard pickup. Cosby uh, never really tried to do anything after catch. Uh, you can see he's a little bit hampered. And uh, he's down He's down on the ground to make that play. Look how he gets up kind of gingerly. That back, uh, that back problem is, is still a little bit of an issue for him today, but he wants to play against his hometown Baylor Bears. Officially at the 45 for the first to 10. Whitaker across the 40-yard line. That offensive line dominating early here for the Texas Longhorns. Texas has been averaging 44 points and 474 yards of offense per game. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Your entire order ships for just $2.95 at Overstock.com. Overstock.com at home with the O. Well, there's no other way to put the running game effort against Texas Tech last week other than four. The offensive line shouldered the burden of responsibility for it. They want to make amends today. They're going to play hard. Second and fourth, the 39, McCoy. Whitaker bumped, still going, and knocked out of bounds as Princeton Hill on the play, a six foot, 180 pound freshman from Mount Pleasant, Texas. Third down, it's, this, is, this is a big play right here. Will the Baylor Bears be able to make Texas either decide to go for it on four down? I don't, they won't go field goal here. I'm not sure they punt. Goes in the end zone, they only pick up 20 yards. Baylor Bears would. Now Texas making a decision here, four down territory or not, if they can do something on third. Three of three, and really going on the drive in third down. They got it here. Whitaker diving across the 35-yard line, and Texas will new set of downs to work with. You know, there's no doubt that Whitaker gives them a little bit of a burst. He has got a quick first step in, in Missouri. That, that was that was the peak. That was the apex in the running game. And then all of a sudden, right here at Texas Tech. 47 of those 80 yards came on the last drive. They had 33 yards rushing about three and a half quarters of the football game against Tech. Yeah, no secret when they had that running game against Missouri, they dominated Missouri in that key matchup. And then Oklahoma State nearly bumped them off here in Austin after that. Williams makes the tackle on the play here. And Texas with second down coming up. And Colt McCoy is now a believer in the running game being very instrumental in his pass protections and then his ability to throw the football. I mean, there, there, it's no secret. You know, you make, even as great as Colt McCoy is, Cosby checks out, as great as McCoy is, if you if you can't run the football and you make him have to throw it, he's not throwing it because he wants to, he's throwing it because he has to, much different deal. Second and seven, he is eight of 11 for 86 yards here. McGee gets the call on the ground, and McGee is stopped just crossing the 30-yard line. Days in scouting report sets us up for what Baylor needs to do to come up with a huge win here today. Well, they certainly can't afford turnovers. Ball security is key. They had five giveaways in their very first game, and they went four games without giving it away at all, only nine on the season. They can't. They have to value possession today. Hidden yards. They have to make Texas go long field. They, have, they can go short field. And, and less first downs they have to generate, more than Texas has to, and they have to fight that line of scrimmage to be balanced and make Texas one-dimensional. Third and six from the 30. McCoy right across the middle. First down again, they're five of five on third down conversions as Cosby comes up with the grab here. Cosby's fourth reception, Shipley has three. Their go-to guys are producing 10 yards on the play. And how big a loss was it when Cosby checked out of the Texas Tech game with the injury? Massive loss. Because look at how important he is to the Texas passing game and Colt McCoy. Very mature guy, older player, was in Major League Baseball for a while. The, the, the team rallies around him. Good kick returner as well. First to 10 at the 20, McCoy. Protection has just been superb. And he drills this one complete inside the 
five yard line. James Kirkendall, the sophomore from Red Rock, Texas. It starts up front. They got the running game going again. So now look, they brought six, and everything is picked up. Look at the pocket that's given to Cole McCoy. Vision totally unimpaired. He gets the football down the field very, very easily to Kirkendall. Big first and goal in the red zone again. Check that. Of course, Kirkendall not from Red Rock, Round Rock, Texas, right here in the Austin area. That's McCoy. Hands this one off. Whitaker trying to squeeze it in. Just shy. And down on the one yard line. Fozzie Whitaker coming in with 134 yards, 6.7 per carry on the season. Burke forced him out. Had some pads were popping right there. Chris Burke with a nice hit. Tried to lower the shoulder. Whitaker, not the biggest back. 5'10", 180-pound guy. Here's the biggest back, Cody Johnson, coming in the lineup. He scored 10 touchdowns this year, number 31. We'll see if he gets the call that's, on a second and goal to go. And that's Miller in front of him, the big D tackle. McCoy rolling out. Take your pick. Touchdown, Texas. Colt McCoy in the red zone coming into today's game. 15 touchdowns, one interception. They get 16 touchdowns, one interception. He had also completed about 82% of his passes. Those numbers are going to go nowhere but up. Red zone, third down, those are the times when quarterbacks make their money. Colt McCoy is making a lot of money for the Longhorns this year. Greg Smith, his second reception of the season, and the sophomore tight end from Montgomery, Texas, gets a touchdown on that play on a one-yard pass. Hunter Lawrence for the PAT. And is good. Texas scores on its first two possessions. Jumps out 14 zip. Smith with his first TD of the year. Welcome back to DKR Texas Memorial Stadium in Austin. Big 12 College Football Saturday. Longhorns 14, Baylor 0. And Colt McCoy gets his second TD pass, but he took a shot as well. And to the neck area, hopefully he will be okay. Here's a look at it. Yeah, here's after he releases the football. He gets run right through. And a pretty good lick put on him right there by Jeremy Williams. But he seems to be uh, seems to be okay. When the game's over, the adrenaline stops uh, flowing. You wake up with a stiff neck tomorrow morning, that's for sure. Mac Brown looks on as his ball club up 14 zip. Tucker's kick. Baker's return from the two. Brought down inside the 20 and wrapped up hard on the play. Now Jim Knox with a free credit report.com sideline report. All right, Bill, right, Jim. Yeah, and that's the other part. He's their leading rusher this year, and that's not something at this point they're hoping someone else would step up. They got Whitaker healthy now and take a little bit of pressure off. It's a long, long campaign. Here is Griffin on first to 10. Saw an opening. 25 30. Griffin needs a block. Breaks one. 50, and down inside of the Texas 46-yard line, Roderick McElroy makes the stop. Boy, you saw Griffin stride there. This kid is an unbelievable athlete in terms of eating up ground quickly. Little option, decides to keep it, gets a block to take, somebody gets cut in half for the Longhorns to take him to the ground, gives him a lane, and once he gets in the open field, he can be dangerous. Got to get his head on a swivel a little sooner to avoid Muckleroy just ripping him. 37 yards on the pickup as Baylor breaks loose. And let's check in with our Bryles and his thoughts on his outstanding freshman quarterback. Let's see what he brings here on a second and ten. Flag is thrown. Pretty early movement. Baylor is going to cross. Part of the snap. A false start by number 72 of the offense. Penalties five yards, and it's still second down. That's big Jason Smith, and uh, in my mind, he's going to be the top half of the first round. He, he's going to be very, very early in the NFL draft. Very athletic offensive lineman playing the left tackle position. And, I mean, Coach Browse can't say enough about it. His attitude, his effort, his, his practice habits, his preparation. He is the total package. No baggage with him. Big name, big smooth. That's and a good name for him. Don't forget intelligence already graduated there. He is set, NFL or not. 
Second down here. Griffin again chased out of the pocket, and that's okay by him. He scampers across the 40. See where they mark the football. Pressured on the play by Aaron Lewis, the senior from Albuquerque, New Mexico. They're going to mark him out at the 41-yard line of Texas. Nine yards on the play. Well, the thing is, whenever Griffin carries the football to the perimeter, the wide receivers rally and block for him because at any moment he can take it to the house. And those wide receivers do a good job of peeled back and getting their blocks. Right in motion, here comes Griffin on a third down play. And Wright gets the carry, and he is stopped well shy of first down territory as Earl Thomas, the free safety there to make the stop on a third and sixth play. And it'll be fourth and a couple here. Well, and Texas keeps their group on because Baylor will go for it here. Fourth and three at the 38. Check for the signals. Griffin throws it out on the flat. Kendall Wright got the first down and stays on his feet down near the 32-yard line. He's a freshman out of Pittsburgh, Texas, with 40 receptions for 514 yards coming in. One of eight freshmen with 40 or more receptions this season. Well, it's a good job. Get it out to a speed guy in space. When I say speed, I mean speed. Kendall Wright. He's, uh, he's, he was a track athlete in high school as well as football and basketball. 11 flat hundred meters. He can scoot a little bit. 40 inch vertical jump. Over 50 feet in the triple jump. They got athletes down here at Baylor, and it made that decision to go for it a little easier for our drives. First to 10 here, and the pitch comes to you. New side. Uh -oh. Loose football and out of bounds as Thomas with the pop there. You know, Arthur, the ball carrier. Sorry, Dave. Art Browns went for it because the same field. It's too long a field goal. If you punt it and goes to the end zone, you only pick up 20 yards. You're down 14 nothing. Go for it. Put the helmet on the football. Wrapped it. Didn't really get a great hit. Helmet on the football, but dis distorted it enough. Did Thomas, where ball security became an issue for Finley, and that's two fumbles. Art Browns. He hasn't lost either of them yet. Hasn't lost any. But two on the ground in the first quarter is not going to sit well. Second and 11. Going to the end zone. Griffin firing and incomplete. Double covered down there. And trying to get the football. Thomas White, senior out of Plano, Texas. He's had at least a reception in 14 straight games. Gideon and Palmer covering. And Gideon not really uh, getting his head back to find the football. He just pulls his hands up and had, had great coverage. But... You know, there's no, uh, no no face guarding in college football. So he had good coverage. And Blake Gideon, of course, still smarting a little bit from the opportunity that he missed down there at Texas Tech. If he catches that floating uh, that floating tip football from interception, Texas could have won the football game. Third, 11 from the 32, and a timeout is called here. As Griffin is one of four in the passing game. His big... 37-yard run set him up in this position for the most part. He has four carries for 43 yards on the ground so far here this afternoon. They want to remind you, later today, college football Saturday triple. Chase Compton may be as good an athlete over 250 pounds as there is in the country. Signs saying make noise. Fans doing that here. Griffin on a third down and long, and this one is thrown away. I hope that was a misconnection there. Intended for White, he was the nearest receiver, pulled up. Well, one of the things about Griffin, though, that you wouldn't expect from a true freshman, had that streak of 209 passes on interception. A younger player normally would try to jam it in there, Dave, and he's really got the smarts about him to just stay away in the boys. Yeah, he, he refuses to throw the football into coverage, and I think it makes it easier for him to make that decision, Bill, because he knows he can gain yards with his feet and his legs. He's got tremendous confidence. You look at everybody on the field. He's looking over at Coach Browse right there as, as he was giving the signals. There's no huddle, no communication. Fourth down. Griffin. Going deep here and incomplete. Right wanting a flag, not getting the call. 
Earl Thomas covering. Boy, did Bright get run into before the arrival of the football? Thomas is back, turns to find the ball. There is contact, and uh, and that's what Bright wanted. This contact before the ball got there. Boy, Griffin thought that he had a shot at it. He thought that that, that his 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 receiver Kendall Wright was just moved off the football by the defender Earl Thomas. Tough break with no flag thrown. And Texas will get it back, first and 10 from the 32. They have been dominant in their first two possessions with this 14-0 lead, and McCoy wants it all right here. Nearly got it on the deep pass play intended for Malcolm Williams. McCoy took a dump back there as they nailed him, and Burke covering on the play for Baylor. Yeah, contested catch. And, 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 and I'll tell you what, that's one big, strong body right there, Malcolm Williams. But he is, uh, he can't make the contested catch. Colt McCoy is, is hit after the throw of the football. Williams was upset because he was having his, uh, his uniform tugged at. I tell you, the officials are lot, letting a lot of things go on down the football field. A lot of body contact. Second and 10 at the 32 now. McCoy drops this one off, and Whitaker carries the football for a few, and third and long here for Texas. Texas does the same thing. Everybody on their football team on the field looks to the sideline to get the signals. Greg Davis is up top making the call, and it's signaled in from the sideline. Colt McCoy and all 10 of his teammates eyes to the sideline. No communication verbally. Everybody knows the play. Goes to the line of scrimmage. Snap count. Everything's in there. Quarter winding down. Final play. Most likely here. Is McCoy. Ooh. Got blasted. Yeah. And it's intercepted. Baylor bringing it back. Burke. 15. Inside the 10. And Burke with the INT out of bounds near the six yard line. A 50 yard return as Colt McCoy got hammered just as he released the football and the interception, the sixth pick of the year for McCoy Jake, as Burke gets his Jake, first of the season. Jake Lamar on the blitz. Watch Jake Lamar. Boom! Number 12 on number 12. Jake Lamar runs right through Colt McCoy and, he, and the ball is inaccurately thrown as a result. Throws it too far inside. Picked off. Taken inside the red zone. You're Big watching. play for Baylor. Welcome back to Austin, where Texas up 14-0, but Baylor getting a great opportunity here after the interception return of Chris Burke. Here's the, uh, the interception. Colt McCoy throws the ball a little wide because of the pressure that was applied to him by Lamar. Easy pickings for Chris Burke. First to 10, and... Baylor keeping it on the ground. Jay Finney, the sophomore from Port Sacana, Texas, they should say first and goal. The six yard line is where he returned it. And Bobino making the stop here is Finley. No gain, basically. Finley averaging 5.9 a pop. Dramatic improvement from last year. He's rushed for five touchdowns on the season for the Baylor Bears. Yeah, second best in the Big 12 as far as rush improvement behind Josh Freeman from Kansas State from year to year. Here is Griffin throwing, incomplete flag. Flag in the end zone intended for Geddes, Beasley covering. David Geddes. Pass interference by number seven of the defense. By rule, the ball is placed at the two yard line, and it's a first down. Take a look right here at what goes on. You make the call. It's Beasley, oh, he grabs him before the ball's thrown. Yeah, he got, he got his money's worth. He bear hugged him. And <laughs> as, as separation is, is, uh, is trying to be accomplished, Beasley won't let him. New set of downs. First and goal from the two now. Finley trying to find a way into the end zone. Nothing doing on that carry. Bobino leading the defensive charge for the Texas Longhorns. Texas allowing 20.7 points per game. That is first defensively in the Big 12, 36th nationally. What they'd like to do here, short field after the interception, is bull their next defensively and make Baylor have to think about kicking a field goal 
on fourth down. Second and goal. And again, Finley is denied. It all Sims, I beg your pardon there. Sims, the ball carrier that time, Ray Sims. It all starts with the surge of the defensive line. They can root hog and get underneath Baylor's talented offensive line to reestablish line scrimmage backwards. Then those linebackers and safeties can come downhill and get over the top with the running backs. The big boys going to get their pad level down. Third and goal. Low man wins. Ernest Smith comes out wide and to the left, right in between, and then the right is the third receiver to the left side. Timeout, Baylor. I'm going to talk it over here on a big play. It's the second quarter underway, and they're down 14 0. Great scoring opportunity. We'll see what happens when we come back on College Football Saturday. Welcome back. Third and goal from the one yard line for Baylor, trying to get on the board. Down two touchdowns to the fourth ranked team in the country, the Texas Longhorns. Robert Griffin. Get him, the the edge, Bill. Get him on the edge. He fakes to the line. Incomplete. So Washington, the attendant receiver. Boy, did he throw it a little bit too hot? I mean, it's there. It's available. Could not make the catch. A little high and a little hot. Going for it on fourth. Fourth down and goal from the one and Baylor. Not here, just trying to pick up points. Knowing that they've got to get touchdowns if they're going to have any chance today. Griffin keeps the football. Why you do that four plays ago? <laughs> I tell you, give him a two-way go because he scored. 11 through the air, now 11 on the ground. He's an equal opportunity guy. 22 touchdowns, 11 each way. And it's it's a nice job up front. You go to the left side behind your All-American, watch the big boy work on the edge. And Griffin is so explosive. Once he turns it up the football field, he is alone. Parks on for the PAT. And it is good. He is 30 of 34 now on the season. And Griffin gets it done himself. 14-7 Texas. Hook him horns. Well, it's 14-7 horns. Check it with Jim Knox real quick for the kickoff. All right, Bill, that's a line, huh? Big boys working well. Big boys, well. just like you. Williams on the return Whoa. right up the middle. Nearly takes it to the house. Brought down near the 41-yard line. Baylor getting on the board here with the interception setting up the short drive. Yeah, it started with a safety blitz. Watch Jake Lamar. Watch him. The offensive line, they have to do their pickups. He comes unblocked. They broke the protection down. He comes clean. The, the, the running backs out of the backfield. Smokes Colt McCoy. Throws it wild as a result, or a little wild in his terms, wild. Chris Burke. Sets it up, touchdown run by Griffin to finalize it. So takeaway, touchdown. 26 yards on that return here is Whitaker, and Whitaker is stopped at the 43 yard line by Pavelli. That was a good job right there of Baylor breaking down Texas's protection. And Chris Burke was the beneficiary of the, of the nice job at the safety spot by Jake Lamar disguising his blitz to the last minute, creeping up there. It's Colt McCroy and Burke gets the Aaron throw. Second down and nine at the 43. McCoy. Yes. Yes. Complete off the uh, hands of Collins, I believe. And that nearly created another pickoff opportunity for that Baylor secondary. Yeah, Earl Patton is, is in the area as a, as a linebacker making that drop underneath. And, uh, they're doing a pretty good job. Baylor's doing a good job of linebackers getting depth in their drops and coverage pretty tight down the football field by the Baylor Bears. They're playing that uh, that cover two. They're keeping two safeties back and rolling the safeties toward the line toward the uh, wide receivers. The linebackers have to do a job in the middle. They're doing a pretty good job. Third nine for the 43 for Texas. McCoy. 
still looking downfield and goes that direction. Incomplete intended for Malcolm Williams on the play. Williams, the 91-yard TD reception last week against Texas Tech, covered by Jake Lamar this time. Well, everybody's probably like, boy, Colt McCoy had all day. Well, Baylor rushed three, and there were five offensive linemen blocking three Baylor rush guys. Eight dropped into coverage, so there were no windows down the football field for Colt McCoy to take advantage of. And even when he got out of pocket, tried to extend it, nobody was able to break free. On third and long, Baylor decided to rush three and drop eight, and they won on that matchup. Here's Justin Tucker to kick it away as Tucker, 53-yard average, a 67-yard kick against Tech. High snap, and they do the rugby-style kick that a lot of schools are starting to work on. It does just that. It takes a tremendous roll. It's difficult to pick up and return, and as a result, Texas gets that ball down in the four-yard line of Baylor. Going to have to go 96 yards to score again. He did that last week against Tech very well. Thanks, Mike. DeMarco, look forward to that coming up. Still a ways to go here, though, as Baylor up and down their own end zone and Griffin with the handoff and not much doing on that first down carry as Jared Norton, a junior out of Rowlett, Texas, the Dallas suburban area, makes the stop on the play for the Longhorns. Jay Finley, the ball carrier. When you're, uh, when you're going in to score, or when you're coming out of the shadow of your own goal line, it's the offensive line that has to perform. The big boys up front have to get something done. Second and ten from the four. Griffin throwing it here. Right. Wow. Big time playmaker. Turns it on across the 30. And Muckleroy closes down on him here. They get out of that tough territory, though, on a nice little pitch and catch. They did a great job of flipping field position right there. Earl Thomas uh, misses. Here he is. It's just like a long lateral. This is the running game. He's in space right now. Well, he splits a couple of defenders. Texas defenders knock each other off of the play. And, uh, and you have an injured Texas player before the snap of the football. And that's, that's Thomas. He got, he got plowed into by a teammate, and he's struggling. He couldn't even get himself on the right side of the line of scrimmage before Baylor was going to quick snap the football. And he, and he goes down to injury. But he collided. Looked like with Jared uh, Norton, potentially. Yeah, his own man. Uh, right. They have knocked him out on that 34-yard play. W watch, they're going to split. They're going to split right there. Two defenders, boom. He just kind of split. And it is Norton that, that just takes him out. And uh, the speed right there is he's able to split the two defenders because of the burst of speed that Kendall Wright has. But Jared Norton and Earl Thomas collide, and Thomas comes up worse for the wear. He helped off Richard Freshman out of. West Orange, Texas, and West Orange Stark High School coming in with 47 tackles, 11 passes broken up, and two picks. Ben Wells goes in now for the Longhorns to replace him. And he was uh, involved in that play last week with Crabtree. He thought he heard a whistle. People thought that Earl Thomas gave up on the play. In the stands, uh, some fans had whistles down there. He heard a whistle, and he basically stopped. Didn't want to incur a penalty. Here comes Griffin, running for his life. Flag is thrown, 40, 45, 50. If the play stands, he'd have a first down, but got a little hold on yeah. That would usually be the indication Holding of the flag. number 72 of the offense. The penalty's 10 yards, and replay first down. That's the All-American, Jason Smith, on the edge. Can't reach out and grab. Here he goes. There, on the, right here, you see Jason Smith. He's got him locked up pretty darn good. And, and the hand, oh, they're, they're, I'll tell you, his hands pretty much in the framework of the body. But you can't grab, you can't grab clock with your hands and stretch the jersey. That's going to be seen every time. His hand placement was his only problem. He is very, very gifted athletically, though. He moves in space very well. First to 20 from the 28 now for Baylor. Second quarter, 14-7 Longhorns with 10-16 and counting here in the first half remaining. Robert Griffin, freshman quarterback. Got room to roam here, and he'll tuck it under. 35-40, got tripped up from behind. 
still shy of that first down, but a pickup of over 10, it appears. So Sam Acho got at his heels a little bit, nipped at his heels. But this is where Griffin is so dangerous. Watch 81 hustle, though. Separates from the block, dives at the heels, and just, just clips him. Takes him out of bounds before he's able to generate that first down. Griffin. And off here. Finley on the carry. Send it down to Jim Knox. All right, Bill. Uh, Lamar Houston's starting defense event for the Longhorns. Looks like he will not return, guys. Left foot injury. Lamar Houston's out of here. Wow. Already had a rack go out before the game from the injury last week against Texas Tech. So that defensive front of Texas really being tested depth wise here today against Baylor. And the Bears on a third and two at the 45. They're all four on third down opportunities here today. Baylor coming in 34% third down conversion. That's last in the league and 96th in the country. Griffin throwing it got deep it. and got it. Complete touchdown, Kendall Wright. No flags on that baby. 55 yards for the score. Well, I'll tell you, uh, Will Muschamp, the, the defensive coordinator, said these wide receivers for Baylor have run by everybody's secondary. These guys can flat out fly. Kendall Wright. No exception to that rule. Big upside potential. I mean, talk about his speed and his athletic ability in terms of high jump and triple jump. And he's, a, he's an amazing athlete. Texas recruited him. Florida, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Arkansas, Clemson. Parks for the point after, and it is good. Griffin throws the TD pass after scoring the first touchdown for Baylor. And Griffin gets his 12th TD pass of the year. And Wright hauls in his fourth TD reception. We're tied at 14 here in Austin. Wright getting a little cool drink from Griffin, 55 yards, and we're tied, Dave. Well, this is uh, matchups. And, and you have a situation where you have a speed receiver, Kendall Wright, matched up on a safety, Ben Wells. By formation, Art Browse got the matchup he wanted. He got his speedster on a guy that is not a cornerback, a safety, and they, he ran right by him for the touchdown. Shipley and Williams are deep on Park's kickoff. It goes out of bounds, so the flag is thrown here. A couple players getting tangled up near the 25-yard line. No flag on that. You know, football is all about creating... Free kick out of bounds by the kicking team. Ball placed at the 40-yard line. First down. That'll be good field position for the Longhorns. Uh, all about mismatches and creating them. And Art Browse, by formation, he's so creative with his formation, his motions, his window dressings, that he got the matchup that he wanted in man coverage. Wide receiver on safety. He'll take it every time. And I'll tell you, whose eyes lit up when he saw it, Griffin. He yeah. had no hesitation. He said, I got the matchup I want. I'm going airborne. We recognize it. Let's see if McCoy can answer. He's got two TD passes today. Comes out firing here on a first and ten. Picks up seven or eight on this play as goes right to Quan Cosby, who scored the opening touchdown. Greg Smith had the other one. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Save time and fuel by shopping comfortably at home with Overstock.com at home with the O. You know, you have to give Baylor a lot of credit. They came from behind, rallied against Missouri, and they, they've rallied from a 14-point deficit on the road to the Longhorns. Baylor's coming on. I'll tell you what, they have been competing harder than you might expect for a team that has started to struggle and get down 14-0 here and right back in it. Burt makes the tackle here. And defensively, they're all about great effort, running to the football, being physical. I mean, they, they just want to establish good habits. You know, they, they, they want to line up right and uh, make the proper adjustments, trust their eyes, make their eyes disciplined, and, and, and make plays. And they're doing it. They really run around well defensively. Third and two after Kirkendall's reception for Texas. Bagra McGee got the first down. Showing some power as he powers his way to the 48-yard line. McGee, 5'10", 205, sophomore out of Tyler, Texas, Longview High. Yeah, this is what we talked about with the Longhorns. No hangover. 
He jumped out to that 14-point lead. Baylor answered. What will Texas do? Looks like they're trying to answer on this very drive as they move the chains, and they're on the Baylor side of the football field right away. First and 10 at the 48. McGee again. 40. Wow. Breaking it. And down near the 30-yard line of Baylor. Jordan Lake, the tackler from the free safety spot. Vondrell McGee came in average at 4.1 a carry, picks up 18 on that toe. McGee tried to take Cosby's block on the edge to his advantage as he took it outside. Lake ripped at the football. He tackled the football as much as he tackled the ball carry. Lake trying to cause turnover. Look at him. Rip and rip and rip and rip right there and try to get it out of there. Nice job. The ball security by McGee. First and 10 at the 30. Texas trying to regain the lead, even at 14 here. McCoy. Escapes one defender. Not another, though, as he's finally wrestled down. A loss in the play of about a yard. Antonio Jones, a junior out of Dallas. 6'2", 225. He's really starting to make some play, uh, some plays. Very confident, blessed physically. He's high tilt guy, high motor guy. Did a good job. Original miss, and then came back and got it. McCoy this time goes rolling out of bounds on the Texas oh, sideline. Boy's team taking some hits there. Look at all the grass stains on his back, on, on, his, on the back of his pants, on the back of his jersey. As an offensive lineman, you don't want to see that. You don't want to see your quarterback being knocked on his keister as much as Colt McCoy has been today. You want to protect and keep him upright. And those grass stains are cool, and he's been knocked around. Well, he came in their leading rusher, opponent 28 yards, and averaging 4.6 has scored seven on the ground. They've made a point they want to get some other folks involved in the running game. Unloads this one just in time, but incomplete. Tended for Cosby, and McCoy again got knocked hard just as he was releasing the football. Jeremy Pressure Williams, by Williams, yeah. yeah. He came on the back side, and, and Cole McCoy blind side. Jeremy Williams puts a hit on him, and he just beat the tight end. You know, around the corner, the tight end was in there. It's a slow block to pick it up. They had problems, uh, a couple of sacks last week against Texas Tech were as a result of tight ends not being able to get it done. Greg Davis had the right protection call, the offensive coordinator, but you have to execute it. Jeremy Williams won the one-on-one -on -one against the tight end. 44-yard attempt coming up for UT here as Hunter Lawrence, no good, pushed it. Well, Baylor has had some success against Texas in the past. you got to go back a ways, though. Seven. Grant Tapp got the ride off. Oh! This one is picked oh. off by Texas. And into the end zone. Touchdown! Just like that. The Longhorns answer as Ryan Palmer comes up 22 yards. A deflected football. And the ball is airborne. And Ryan Palmer says, I will take it to the house. You have a non-offensive touchdown. And when those occur, it's always a big factor in any football game. Griffin tries to fire it in there. Off the hands, airborne. He tried to go to his big threat once one more time. Kendall Wright, Kendall Wright, the ball splits his hands, deflects off his hands. Palmer's Johnny on the spot. It's only oh, the second good. interception for Griffin all year. Second interception, that one went back to the house. Palmer's third pick, and he gets the score. Yeah. Ryan Palmer with a 22-yard interception return in Texas. Up seven again as Griffin. Rare interception, as Dave mentioned. This one hurts. Tucker to kick it off, and Lamar and Baker are deep for Baylor. And it goes to Michael Baker. He'll let it go out of the end zone. And for game break, let's go to Mike Goldberg. Buckeyes and the Wildcats, a couple of top 25s. Thank you very much, Mike. Right here, it is number four, Texas by seven. As Griffin in trouble this time. Still on his feet. Uh -huh. Finally, he is brought down near the three-yard line, and they mark it closer to the He's four. Hurt. He's hurt. Wow. He's slow to get up. I'll tell you, that last shot as he went to the turf hurt. 
Both these quarterbacks today have taken some shots. And watch Griffin. He's so athletic and so confident. He can be busts away from a couple as he's going to the turf. The last one right there, it falls on top of him. I think stunned him a little bit as, as Randall got the hit on him. 16-yard loss on the play. And this Texas defense has lost of key performers. Staying revved up. Play clock winding down. Timeout. Griffin. I think he got the timeout before the official threw the flag. I think so, too. I think they'll have to pick that flag up. Art Briles looking on. First year coach here for Baylor as timeout. Did a nice Baylor. turnaround job down in final Houston timeout. five years. Use their final timeout. <laughs> Place is jumping, going crazy following Palmer's 22 yard interception return of Griffin's last pass. And, and, and this is this is basically right. It's a tough catch, but a catch right has to make. But what an unbelievable play by Palmer as he cuts inside the, the receiver that he was defending and, and made a great play on the football. Watch. Airborne. Here's here's the athletic move right there. Gets inside of his receiver that he's defending and, and makes the catch and takes it to the house for a non-offensive score, defensive touchdown. Second interception return for TD for Texas this year, and Williams had 181 yards against Arkansas. Let's check in with Jim Knox. All right, Bill, you know, we are talking now. They needed a big spark, and I think they got it. Yeah, he normally has that three meals before he comes to the stadium. Baylor comes back firing here, and trying to get it out of that dangerous territory. And get us a receiver. Beasley makes the tackle. Well, the Texas is going to create some energy, and, and that's what they're trying to do. And I thought they did a pretty good job. They had a 14-0 lead. You know, I thought they were in pretty good shape. Baylor came storming back. Texas recaptures the lead in dramatic fashion with Palmer's pick six. Well, there's some empty seats here today, and they've been averaging 97,998 in this expanded stadium. So the fans a little hangover from that loss to Tech as well. Griffin steps right through and goes to the 27-yard line. What it is, it's right there. It's a quarterback sneak that only the center and quarterback know about. Came up to the line of scrimmage. Put your hand on the center. Give a little pressure to the center, telling him you want the football. The only two that know are those guys, and, and they get after it pretty well. Texas pop asleep a little bit at the wheel as Griffin just busts up the middle of the line to a great advantage. Fourth and two at the 28. They're going for it, or so it appears. Almost going to jump offside. He may not do anything now other than let the clock wind down and punt it away. They're looking at our browse for another call. Doesn't look like he's signaling a whole lot in there. They're going to, they tried to make him jump. They didn't get him to jump. So they're going to take the, the delay of game. And he's got a great delay of game on the offense. He Five yards almost penalty. got it to happen. Because if they had jumped offside, it would have been a first down. And Griffin went hard count. And Texas got into the neutral zone a little bit, but got back. They, there was no contact and no problem there. So I like the move. Away. I like the move, Dave. Yeah, I mean, Bryles looking for any little edge he might get here. He's got an outstanding punter. Assuming he can take care of business here, what's five yards, right? And he had, he had no timeouts left to work with. Texas has three timeouts and over three minutes on the clock. Colt McCoy gets another opportunity. Jefferson, sophomore from South Lake, Texas. They came after him, but he gets it off. Shipley, the lone return man, stays away from it. Puts a Baylor bounce. It goes inside the 30. And Texas to take over there. We'll take a look at the BCS standings presented by American Airlines. And this is why Texas should be still excited. You got Tech number two right now. Take a look at the Big 12 with Texas, then Oklahoma. And you got Oklahoma State at nine, Missouri at 14. And Texas has finished the gauntlet, if you will, even right. though they still have, of course, Texas A&M. And they got Kansas next week on the road. They have to treat the, these final three games like another gauntlet. That's how they have to approach it. McCoy, first and ten. Oh, pitch and catch here is Shipley. Shipley banged hard but hangs on at the 44-yard line. Jordan Shipley had a 15 reception game against Oklahoma State earlier this season. Boy, does Jordan Lake bring the wood. And, and watch these two right here. Oof. I mean, that's two good football players. That's a, a good catch and a tremendous hit by Jordan Lake. Shipley's fourth reception for 38 yards. And Whitaker. 
Good balance by Fozzie Whitaker across the 50 and down to the 45. Hill can't take him down, Bill. Arm tackle by Hill, and, and Whitaker just breaks right through it. He's reached out almost a face mask as he was up around that headgear. Nice finish of the run by Whitaker running through that arm tackle. Patton there to make the stop. First and 10 at the 45 of Baylor. 240 and counting to go in the first half. Texas over 200 yards of offense now at 208 for the afternoon, and a timeout is called here by the Longhorns. We mentioned those BCS ratings, and everybody can't wait for Sunday after the college football Saturday action. Tomorrow night, be there live for the first show that breaks down the new BCS standings. Find out who's moving up, who's moving out, and who's moving on towards the birth in the BCS bowl game. The official BCS rating show tomorrow at 8 p.m. Of course, the latest game of the century is Oklahoma State at Texas yeah. Tech uh, in Lubbock today. And Oklahoma State still has Oklahoma. Right. Oklahoma still has, obviously, the Cowboys. And they still have Texas Tech. So you take a look at what's going to happen and we still get we got a great opportunity for a three-way tie Dave you really do and then and then you, you end up going to BCS rankings and, and that's where it, it gets a, li a little bit dicey there's still a multitude of scenarios that could take place all you need to do is keep your head down take care of business to see what unfolds McCoy here on first and ten oh. and Incomplete, but send it down to Jim Knox. Aid for that? Hey, Knoxie. Come I, on. That was impressive. Uh, the one point landing on the couch. Right? <laughs> what a deal. Oh, speaking of what a deal, great run here by Whitaker. They're glad to have him back and healthy. Bozzi last week, six carries, 42 yards against Texas Tech. Pat and Lamar combined for the tackle here. Well, he does a great job of maintaining balance. He's got 63 yards on eight carries today, counting that effort. And if you get that left hand down, balance himself, great yards after first contact for Whitaker. Yeah, eight for 63 now for Whitaker. And Texas scoring territory again, first and 10 at the 26. McCoy, Cosby, oh. touchdown, Texas. Drag one with it, and the Longhorns quickly bump it up to a 13-point lead on a 26-yard play. Boy, what a game of spurs. Texas, 14 unanswered. Baylor answers with 14 of theirs. Now Texas puts 14 more on the board to get this extra point is successful. And Juan Cosby knows for the goal line. When he realized he had an opportunity to score, he was not going to let Colt McCoy and his teammates down. Colt McCoy, three touchdown passes on the day already. Cosby getting his second as Hunter Lawrence for the point after, and the kick is good. Texas now 28-14. Reminds us of that Oklahoma Kansas State game we had a couple yeah. weeks ago, huh, Dave? Nice blitz pickup by Whitaker that allowed Colt McCoy to get the ball off. Cosby splits a couple of defenders, takes it to the house. I mean, Cosby was determined to finish that run. But an excellent job by Whitaker picking up the linebacker, Coffee, that allowed that to take place. So Whitaker showed he could do something with the ball in his hands with 64 yards rushing on eight carries. How about the blitz pickup? He's shown himself to be a complete running back. Our Suzuki Way of Life honor roll and... Today we're spotting, spotlighting Chris Obanaya, and uh, boy, what a great story this guy is. Graduating the spring with a history degree, three-time academic All-Big 12. A big run he had in the Oklahoma game, the start of that Texas gauntlet. He has become an outstanding receiver, but he's also had some key runs. A little banged up today. They seem limited use on the field, but this guy is uh, quite a credit here to UT. He is. He's got time management figured out, just like Griffin does with Baylor. This time management is, is unbelievable. These kids get it figured out. Open eye a little bit of an ankle problem today. But he is one fine student athlete. Missouri City, Texas, Jesuit High School. Chris Open eye. The kickoff, and again, it is Baker and Lamar that are deep. And Baker. About the five. Oh, found a hole. 25-30. Skipped by another nice return by Mikhail Baker. And 
Good operating room with 152 uh -oh. to go and hold everything here as multiple flags. Yep. Extracurricular in front of the Texas bench. After the play, a personal foul by number four of Texas. The penalty is 15 yards, and it's a first down. I'm going to assume that would be Aaron Williams. Next so. coverage team. Yeah, good coverage team. Hey, tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday returns. The Packers take on the Vikes. Rams battle the Jets or other regional games. Or the Panthers head to Oakland, take on the Raiders. Coverage begins with the Built for Tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show. Noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Check your local listings for the game and start time in your area. Remember, no timeouts for Baylor. They got a minute and 52 to work with. The only way the clock stops is moving the chains for a moment or two. At the 48 of Texas, Griffin. Going deep again. Oh. And it is complete with a flag throw. Oh, wait a minute. Drop the football. It's interference, so yep. they're going to get the ball there. Going to Kendall Wright once again. You know, great quarterbacks do that. Kendall Wright rewarded him with a bomb, and then Kendall Wright deflected the ball for the interception that was taken back for a touchdown. Kendall Wright a little out and up, double move, and he That's gets separation. That's interference by number three of the defense. The penalty is 15 yards, and it's a first down. And you had no choice if you're Curtis Brown to do exactly what you did. He was beaten on the up, out and up double move, and Griffin, uh, Griffin knows that his receivers can run by anyone, and he certainly knows Kendall Wright can run by anyone. So the penalty makes it first to 10 at the 33. Again, as they mentioned, no timeouts from Baylor. 144 to go. You know, that was a that was a hits up play, honestly, by Curtis Brown. Prevented the touchdown from happening. Yep, exactly. Griffin here coming right back. And it is juggled oh. and incomplete. Intended for Geddes this time. Beasley covered. And Beasley found the ball at the last minute. Beasley got his head turned around to find the ball. And, he, and then now he goes airborne with Geddes, and he gets a right hand in there and deflects it just enough. Geddes can't control the deflection, but Griffin just keeps firing bombs to his wideouts, who he has a lot of confidence in. Well, you had 6'4 Geddes against 5'10 Beasley there. Yeah. And put it up for grabs. And Beasley went up and, and uh, did a good job of contesting it. Second and 10 at the 33. 136 to go in the half. Baylor down two touchdowns. They run the football here. And... Well, you can't spike it, because now, now that would be third down. Right. And, and uh, you don't have any downs to waste. You still have time. There's still a minute and 20 seconds. Executions is, is a big, as big a key now as anything. With no huddle, you can still get a lot of plays off. Four down territory, obviously. Sims comes into the backfield as Griffin with a clock moving at 105. And a third and 10 at the 33. Now right in motion. Griffin to Kendall Wright, drops the football and out of bounds. Now that's a backward pass, yeah. so it's, it's not an incompletion. It's a live football, and it went out of bounds. No, well, he had a he had a, earlier a backward pass, and that's what this is. And he fired that pill. Boy, yeah. he rocketed it out there a little bit. Griffin now with, with showing that arm that he's got. That time a little bit too much. And clock running at 33 seconds, fourth down, and 11. And the official. I mean that ball. That ball was thrown in timeout by Texas. Timeout, Texas. And, and I think second Will, timeout. Will Muschamp timeout. wants to talk it over. Now this is too long a field goal. Because it'd be a what a 52-yard field goal in that range. Yep. So you know there's still 27 seconds to go. If you can generate a first down, you can still you can run more snaps, particularly the way. Baylor operates with that no huddle. Their, their, their offense can be up-tempo in a two-minute drill any time during the game. Texas or Baylor can do the same things. Well, Mac being attended to here. Hopefully he is all right. Might have ripped that headset off and, and, and torn the ear a little bit. Maybe a little bit of a, a blood in the ear when he was uh, ripping that headset on and off his, his uh, head. Injuries extending to the coaching staff now. It's a violent game. <laughs> All right, we'll see what Baylor comes up with. Now, remember, they've gone for fourth down two or three days. To, they've been successful two or three times today, including a touchdown on a fourth down. They've got to get 11 for the first down. 
Griffin in trouble, and he is sacked. Ryan Palmer had the interception for the touchdown, and now he comes back to sack him with 22 seconds to go. And now Texas and... All right, what do we do with it? Yeah, here comes they got a timeout to work with. Ryan Palmer off the slot. Griffin's going to avoid him. Palmer stays right with him and finishes it. Just a great job in space by Palmer. Juke doesn't go to the ground. Finish. Nice job by Palmer. Staying on his feet and adjusting to a very athletic quarterback in space. So Texas with a timeout remaining, and it's first and 10 at the Baylor 40 with just 22 seconds to go. Colt McCoy is to Obaniah. And Chris, and that'll be the end of the half, I assume, here with the clock winding down. And oh, Texas uses its final timeout. Well, they ran the little shuttle pass there. It's a very safe play. If it's not executed, it's not a fumble. It's an incompletion, unless, obviously, there's an interception. But Colt McCoy uh, is, is very sure that that's not going to happen. He's not going to put his team in that kind of jeopardy. Now, do you go Hail Mary? Do you go hook and lateral? What do you do here? Uh, there's still 13 seconds to go. You have no timeouts remaining. If you can get a play to the sideline and, and get out of bounds, you know, with some decent depth to it, you can still line up and kick a field goal potentially. And, but, but honest, obviously, Baylor is going to funnel things to the sideline and make Texas throw to the middle of the football field to complete it because they have no timeouts remaining. The clock will stop again to move the chains for a first down. But if you're thinking at home, uh, why call timeout here? Well, because you got it and you can talk over and decide do you want to try something or not. Right. And you got nothing to lose as long as you don't turn it over. And we saw Brian Underwood talking with his Baylor defense about what they're going to do on their side of the football, the key coordinator. Second and seven. 43. McCoy. Looking deep. Oh. And it is picked off. There is the turnover. Pavlik. And Pavlik, oh, horse collar, horse collar brought down a second to go. Yeah, they'll get a final play and they'll get 15 more yards with it. Now you might want to line up and kick a field goal. What do you have to lose other than it being blocked in return? But there's one second. Do you want to go hail mary over the 15 yard, or do you want to go long distance field goal? So a couple of bad things happen for Texas here. Good things uh, for Baylor. Pavlik, his fourth interception of the season. The junior from San Antonio on a Smithson Valley high. And all he did was read the quarterback's eyes. And there's the horse collar by Collins, a definite horse collar. And Colt McCoy with his second interception of the half. He's got three touchdowns and two interceptions. Well, Baylor, what success they've had this year has been because of the turnover situation. Now, today, of course, Palmer had the pick for Texas to get a touchdown. But Baylor has certainly been set up because of the turnovers offensively as well. Chris Burke took his interception to Colt McCoy to the six-yard line, yeah. and they scored on a short field, so both offenses have had interceptions have been costly. No rush pass. three, yep, they do that, and Griffin is now going out as Kendall Wright has the football. Wright will launch, and he's got the arm in the end zone! Yes, oh, out of the end zone! Caught it, though. Out of the end zone! Wow, what a play. What an entertaining first half. <laughs> Baylor <laughs> almost got a quick six. Art Bryles has a lot of bullets in the chamber now. Art Bryles has got himself some offense. He, uh, he is not void of creativity. And once again, you have, a, you have a very gifted wide receiver that can do a lot of things. Kendall Wright's a great athlete. So a backward pass. Now you can throw a forward pass after throwing a backward pass. Now he's creating and extending the play. Everybody takes the, the patterns as deep as they possibly can. Right foot out. It's no catch. Geddes catches the football but does not have a, a either foot in bounds after the reception. He definitely makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. And uh, Baylor's staying out because of the replay that, yes, they are looking at it to make sure. And it's pretty obvious, as you can see there. But uh, a great attempt. And as our Bryles looks on, let's send it down to Jim Knox with Mac Brown.
big play, and you got the big play from Ryan Palmer after you guys were tied at 14. It was, Jim. We jumped out early and probably got a little complacent there, and they hit a deep ball on a young guy that hadn't played very much, which was smart, uh, real smart of Art. Uh, we said Robert Griffin's a good player. And then uh, senior Ryan Palmer turned it around for us, and the offense came back and scored. All right, real quick, they're throwing everything at Colt. He's seeing all sorts of blitzes, but still he has three touchdown passes in the first half. He does. Colt's playing real well, and he'll do it again in the second half. Probably forced that one a little bit, trying to get something at the end, but it didn't cost us points. A, a lot of injuries to you guys in the first half. Even you sustained <laughs> one on your left ear. What happened? Well, somebody got knocked out of bounds, and I was watching the play, and I used to be quick enough to get out of the way, Jim. I'm not quick enough. All right, he's still playing hurt, though, guys. All right, appreciate it, Mac. Right now, let's head to our college football. Saturday studios join Mac, Mike Goldberg and DeMarco Farr. We're at halftime in Texas leading Baylor 28 to 14. Mike.